What's up, everyone? Welcome to the 613th episode of the Pokemon Podcast. It's super effective. I'm your host, Steve. With me is Hannah. I am here. Uh, I I have complaints. I have complaints. Oh, no. <laughs> Just one complaint, more like. But I feel took, very strongly about it. It took over a year, but finally we have <laughs> Hannah to, com- com- to, to be the complainer. No, it's... <laughs> I've complained about this before. She has she has <laughs> fully made it into this show. <laughs> <laughs> Took a little uh, while. Uh, we also have Bobby here. Bobby, please tell me you have complaints too. I, probably, but I am also <laughs> addicted to the music of Pokemon Sleep now, which is wonderful. At least Good. Cyan Beach. Cyan Beach. Uh, I great. should have guessed you would like that one. <laughs> you might not like Topolo as much as I do. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah. I might be staying <laughs> at the beach for weeks to come. <laughs> no, you'll you'll learn very quickly that the beach has nothing good. <laughs> <laughs> Except the music. I'm like three days in the beach and I'm like, why am I here? <laughs> oh. Should have gone to Topolo. Yeah, I could have gotten Onyx. I got a I got a pincer I didn't have before, so that's like a plus. Okay. There you go. I was getting some Iggly buff spawns, and that helps. I don't have a good one of those yet. Mm. Mm. All right, well, yeah. we don't have a lot of news this week because we are recording on a Wednesday because I leave for Florida um, on Thursday. So uh, if I saw you, great, thanks, awesome. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure it was a good weekend. Uh, I will say, though, because I always do my disclosures, even though it's like a $12 ticket to attend a regionals, I do have to disclose that the Pokemon Company did provide me with a twelve dollar ticket. Um, legally, I have to say that. It's I know sometimes uh, sometimes there's like YouTube comments of like, why does Steve always say the Pokemon Company pays for them? Because I have to legally, according to the U.S. government, as no matter how if it was a five dollar thing or a thousand dollar thing, Uncle Sam needs me to tell you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what it comes down to. So, yeah, uh, I always try to get the disclosures out of the way. Uh, so we have some Pokemon Sleep, some Pokemon Go, some Pokemon Anime, and the uh, Pokemon TCG stuff um, this episode. So, just happens to work out because uh, that's what we've been talking about. <laughs> 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 Everything that isn't Scarlet and Violet. Uh, let's sure. just talk with Pokemon Sleep. There's not a lot happening. Um, but they did push an in-app update saying 1.5 is coming, which is a pretty, that means something big usually, normally. Theoretically, not... we no, just don't not... know what yet. Okay. It, so there are point updates, they're like, point updates are typically bigger or versus e... like a 2.0, like that would be huge. Well, I think Raiko was, I could be wrong, so feel free to correct me in the comments. I think Raiko was 1.4, and then there was 1.4.1, which was fixing the one thing, <laughs> and then 1.4.2, <laughs> which was fixing another thing. Yeah, and we are on 1.4.3 at this point. I think that the main thing with version 1.5 was that uh, they were going to make it not available to Android six anymore was that what seven, i saw seven, Android seven, seven? I yeah thought, right the one that's eight years old yeah i think it was seven i thought yeah android seven mm-hmm. i heard that like certain flip phones can't play pokemon sleep and yeah certain flip you mean like foldable phones oh yes yeah, sorry <laughs> I was like, I don't think any, I don't think any flip phone can play Pokemon Sleep. The new flip my, phones. My the Motorola yeah. Razor cannot play Pokemon Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> my LG Chocolate just <laughs> struggling to play Pokemon Sleep. I had two of those, and I loved them. Yeah, I had the T-Mobile Sidekick, and I loved it. Nice, nice. I had a flip phone. I was too young to remember what kind it was. <laughs> was it not just a Motorola? Everyone just had a razor at a certain point. At one point, yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, certain foldable phones struggle to play sleep. 
I know nothing about foldables besides there's like a lot of them now. And are there? There, there are some. Like Samsung. There are a few. There are Samsung. three ma- three major companies that do them. I think. Who's the third? There's Google Pixel. There's Samsung. Yeah, there's Google Pixel. There's Samsung. I think there's a third. Is mm. didn't Motorola make? A f- yeah. Yeah, Motorola did, and they called I it think a razor. So. They did. Yeah, yeah, the flip razor. Yeah, that one. Oh, the flip one. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Yep. So, are there specific ones that don't work, or is it just? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not. Mm. I'm, Catch has been me. Uh, <laughs> he's very mad at me because I won't play with him. Um, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not sure. This episode's uh, off the rails already. Okay. We here, get for here, a Wednesday episode. Here's yeah. our, all right, what's, what's our speculation here? Are, do we think they're going to do Entei first or Suicune first? What's the Pokedex order there? I always get them mixed up. I believe Suicune is last out of the three in the Pokedex order, but let me verify real quick. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a poster with all of the Pokemon on my wall right now. It's Raikou, Entei, Suicune is the, okay. the yeah. order. Then I would guess Entei next. That just seems they just Pokedex, just Pokedex logical. order. Yeah. But do you think they... Oh, obviously, Entei at the beach doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> no. Ente's Ente, at the beach sounds Ente like in Topalo does title. make sense. Mm-hmm. In Topalo, yeah. But I'm I'm still kind of convinced that if they do it at all in a non green ga- green grass island, they will also have an option for green grass. Mm. Mm. I'm not convinced they would do an event just on a non green ga- green grass island. I it would be nice to see like oh Ente is here you can either choose green grass or you can choose Topalo. Yeah, yeah. That kind of thing. Um but one is harder than the other when it comes to but does po- powering up. So as someone who wasn't really playing, well didn't play at all uh, before the Raikou event, did do the did the spawns change on green grass before the Raikou event? Or are there still only specific things that are going to spawn on green grass, regardless of like whether there was a Raiko event or not? Raiko didn't bring any unique spawns to green grass. I so guess if Entei... it, it did in- like slightly increase the chance of electric Pokemon. Okay, but those all those electric Pokemon were already available to be found on green grass prior yeah. to Raiko. So if Entei came to green grass, it would be the same. This like most likely the same Pokemon would be able to show up along with Entei on green grass. It wouldn't be, and maybe they boost something, but like the ones that were already there would stay, would probably be the what? ones that would spawn. Fire Pokemon are even on green grass besides Charmander. So do you get an influx of Charmander? Growler? <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, I think Growler's on green grass. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Then have they done um in the past? Where there's like uh, an event, but it, it's multiple. Yeah, yeah. There was be... the um, there was the event where they introduced the Dene, and they also introduced some Pokemon from Lapis. And you could mm-hmm. that was the week that Lapis opened. Well, Lapis technically opened, I think, like three days beforehand, um, or something like that. Where like it opened midweek, and like people jumped to it midweek, which was those hardcore <laughs> players. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then <laughs> when that event started, you could either go to Greengrass or you could go to Lapis. Got it. I don't think there was a very small percentage of players that had that choice because you have to be pretty far in the game to have Lapis unlocked. So you were kind of forced. Yeah. There was also a week where they boosted shiny Pokemon. And what? there was like six Pokemon that were shiny. I had like spent way too long in a YouTube thumbnail about it. And then that <laughs> YouTube thumbnail ended up being a very bad click thing for youtube uh for the podcast uh, but it was like absol <laughs> jigglypuff um pincer and then like three other pokemon that had increased shiny and you could go to any island but some islands like topalo spawned none of those pokemon so there was no <laughs> point in going to topalo mm. and then like green grass spawned all of them but like if people wanted absol they were like 
just Apsil, you would go to like Tundra. It was like really weird. Like it was technically every island, but they were not equal <laughs> in any in, <laughs> by any means. Yeah. <laughs> but it was nice you got the choice. Sad that I missed a shiny event. I hope they bring one around again. You well, haven't gotten any shinies yet, right? No. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> I call myself a shiny hunter. <laughs> uh, all my shinies are bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't even have that many. If, the, if they introduced Dedene with Raiko, technically. Like Dedene was like the new Pokemon like a week before Raiko came out or whatever or Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Um, okay. I I would assume they would maybe do like a new fire Pokemon. I don't know what that would be. Like po- Ponyta. <laughs> <laughs> that one would be popular. What other Larvesta. popular fire type Pokemon would they have that would look cute when asleep? Because I think that's another factor. I think people would be surprised at how cute Volcarona can look sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any Gen 5 Pokemon? I mean, we have Dead Dead Gen 6 and Gallade is Gen 4. So Unova unconfirmed. No Unova Pokemon in Pokemon Sleep? (laughs) How sad. I actually don't think there is any Unova Pokemon. They're saving it for Pokemon Sleep Black and White, where it's only Unova Pokemon. Yeah, only Unova. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I w- I would assume that this one point five is getting ready for the next legendary. Um, also, uh, before we move on to Pokemon Go, I've not used the Dene at all this past week, and I'm regretting it because I don't. <laughs> I think I think Dedene is so good. <laughs> Dedene is amazing. Why aren't you using Dedene? You just found uh, you thought because I'm on better. beach, and so all my Pokemon it's like Oranberry, Pekka Berry, which is Wigglytuff, Oranberry's water Pokemon, and then the Flying Berry. I don't know, remember what that's called, but I have Pokemon that match all those, and Dedene doesn't match. So I was like, okay, I'm go all in. I, like I, I for the first time ever, I have like five Pokemon that match all of these. Nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Dedene is electric, not fairy, right? Of course. Yeah, Dedene is electric in this game. Okay. Um and. I felt like I was critting once a day with the day. Yeah. I have had a day where I crit every single meal because of my Dedene, or at least in part thanks to my wow. Dedene. And I'm, I mean, my Dedene does not collect the most berries, does not collect the most ingredients, but that skill <laughs> is so useful. Oh. Yeah, I, I have like a slow king. And it's it's pop, possibly the best slow king you could you could have, uh, and it gets slow king tails because it's the only Pokemon that can get slow king tails is the slow poke line. Eventually, and, ditto. And slow king is better than slow bro. There's no difference. It's just slow king is like point one percent better than slow bro. <laughs> and it just feels so useless on my team. It just. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> like I don't know how you get it. But, like I'm there probably is a better sloking out there, but my sloking matches everything that should be good, and it just feels completely useless. And I I probably will switch it out for Dedenne just because it, it barely gets any berries, it barely gets any slowpoke tails. <laughs> it yeah. has like ingredient finder M. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling like almost any team I want to have going forward is going to need to have Dedenne and Wigglytuff on it. Just the combination of those two. Uh, yeah, you could sub out Wigglytuff for Espeon or the Ralts line. Mm-hmm. Right, but the Ralts, get the Ralts line is from Lapis, right? You have to get yeah. Ralts from Lapis. So that is... I'm still 16 more sleep styles away from that. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, I'm... So I'm much closer than I was before the Raikou event. That's good. Yeah, I, I have an Iggly buff right now that I know I'm using, but I, I'm... Months from Lapis, probably. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Pokemon Go. There was actually a lot of Pokemon Go news this morning, so very convenient. Thank you, Niantic. Um, Before we get to the the news this morning, they didn't announce the April Community Day will be Bellsprout. 
Um, it is on it is on April 20th. So some people celebrate that day for <laughs> whatever reason. They, like, people celebrate a lot of days. I think it was like <laughs> National Donut Day the other day. But it is on Saturday, April 20th from 2 to 5. Uh, just also a fun fact about Bellsprout. It's Pokedex number is 69. So there's two so there's no coincidence there. yeah there's, there's no the, oh, it also gets the, i mean it there also is a gets, coincidence there's what i meant sorry <laughs> it also gets the move magical leaf <laughs> yep whoever really whoever planned out this community <laughs> all day out with this. they they thought they, they, real they hard were about it. they were very excited to bring this community <laughs> day to life yeah they've been waiting years for this they're like when is the next time april 20th is on a weekend (laughs) um here the news about this isn't like bell's proud being shiny or that it's on 420 i think the news to take away from this is niantic is not afraid to still do gen one community days (laughs) well i think at least in our slack there was a poll to ask how many shiny Bellsprout people had, and mm-hmm. most people still don't have many, if any. I don't mm-hmm. have a single one yet. Yeah, I have, uh, I have, I two. have two. Yeah, and I got them years apart. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's definitely one that's not... I don't think it's been in anything. I'm trying to think if there's any event that really... Because when it was released, it was just released, I think, during a... During some the big random drop. event yeah it was kanto tour it got released wasn't it no no it wasn't it came out before mm-hmm. kanto tour because mm-hmm. i have one from because i remember oh, i got I the have... day it was released and mm-hmm. that was like the first time i've ever gotten like a shiny day of release yeah uh, was i got one on, i got one in 2000 on february 8th 2019 so okay. wasn't it like uh wait save the trees plastic is bad event and that's Earth how Day they event? that's how they label it in America. <laughs> Save the trees, plastic is bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, that's possible. Isn't uh isn't the uh, the week you're talking about, Steve? The um Save the Trees, Plastic is Sustainability bad. Week. Sustainability Stay, yeah, Week. Yeah, isn't yeah, it, yeah, isn't it the is. week after the Bell Sprout Community Day? Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just, there you go. Because Trubbish is supposed to be. <laughs> uh, um, and by the way, I was looking at the completely wrong Bell Sprout. Um, <laughs> my first shiny Bell Sprout was from July 19th, 2020. So, year and a half after I thought it was. But that um, still was prior to uh, Canto Tour. So, yeah. Okay, so this is April. Mm, go fest. <laughs> and then May should be Poplio. Theoretically. Theoretically. And Maybe. then yeah. June should be whatever the, the scam dragon Goomy. was last year. Right. It'll be Goomy from last Goomy. year. Yeah. Goomy. A Goomy. Yeah. yeah. Goomy. It'll be Goomy. <laughs> Which is a good shiny. Yeah. Great yeah, yeah, shiny. Yeah. Great shiny. I somehow got two of them last year during GoFest and neither were from raids. Like, because they were in the wild. This That was kind of the first time yeah. they did it where there was in the wild as well. And I got two of them during GoFest. So that was They were also in research, I think, too. Or maybe it was research, but it, they weren't only in raids. Which yeah, was there was something else different. Because was... I got a shiny Gumi, not it... raiding. Yeah, but the research was do five raids or something like that, wasn't it? Oh, that maybe. would not surprise me. <laughs> I, w- I was <laughs> raiding, just right. not for Gumi. <laughs> that sounds that that feels like the right thing. <laughs> yeah, that does. Uh, I feel like they usually because like Go Fest isn't until in july though right i feel like they do the the rate the at least this is how it happened like last year and the year before the community day for last year's dragon raid pokemon is like right after go fest and i feel like it's always to remind everyone who just raided a bunch like by the way this is going to be <laughs> next year's thing and you just spent a bunch of money for no reason yeah basically. people fall for it every year still i fall for it every year so <laughs> i'm so yeah, close this year if they <laughs> If they were doing shiny Jangmo at the in-person go fests at the New York one, I would do the raids there, but they're not. So they are saving they? me. Are they not? The shiny's not. 
The shiny is only at the global. Oh, I see. And I'm really? not going to do it for the global. The hype's well, not no, there. Well, no, I think they forgot to add the shiny symbol. <laughs> no, it was announced. It was one of the first things that was announced. Wow. I'm, it's I'm a very shocked. good shiny. It's one of my favorite shinies, and I'm going to be patient. It's a great... <laughs> <laughs> that is the opposite reaction of what I have whenever any of this stuff happens. <laughs> I am going to try to be patient. Uh, well, they did announce more stuff for GoFest. Speaking of GoFest, uh, Sendai was sold out as of this morning. Only Saturday is sold out. The pre-sale sold out. So they, they did allow more tickets. Um, uh, the, 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 I don't know where these people are staying uh, because the whole... <laughs> area of sendai doesn't have any hotels and anytime i go to a hotel site to double check they're like the nearest hotel is two hours away would you like to book <laughs> that's where gonna people have to are get there on the bullet train every morning <laughs> yeah right. mm, yeah so i don't i don't know where these people are are, are planning on staying because there ain't no hotels I mean, uh, but they they you know, did take a 13 I'd... hour flight to japan maybe two hour Train ride is not <laughs> terrible afterwards. <laughs> train ride every day. I just, I do wonder how expansive the like play in Sendai, like how, because Sendai itself is not big. Mm -hmm. So, like, is that going to extend to like Fukushima? Is that going to extend to like, I, we don't know what the play area is. I think for New York, it was like every borough you could play in. Um, mm -hmm. It was like really, really, it wasn't just like, Manhattan, it was like it was like all of New York, and I think I didn't a little bit that. of Jersey, where people were like, "Yeah, I was like across the the lake, and I was still getting spawns." Not wow, Lake River, I think so. Wow. Yeah, gave Jersey a chance too. Yeah, Jersey got something finally. <laughs> uh, they announced the official Pokemon Go Fest 2024 T-shirt. You can um, buy it. It looks like it is shipping. Mm -hmm. um, it is a purple with a prism pokeball and just, just slap necrozma right across of it it is it is okay when i say slap it's not like the image from bulbapedia which a lot of like merchandise is like yeah what image can we have from bulbapedia <laughs> from ken sugimori slap it on charge you 40 dollars um this does look like a new piece of artwork of necrozma necrozma maybe I mean, it's it's head on, which is not usually a Pokemon artwork, but they've done that of Necrozma before. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a stock image from somewhere. And it, this is also, yeah. this is where I have my complaint. <laughs> I said this last year for this shirt, for, for last year's shirt that I'm wearing right now, they need to move the design up by an inch or an inch and a half. I don't know why they've decided to center the design around the solar plexus. That's not how a t-shirt's supposed to work. Mm -hmm. Here's my here's mine from 2021. Look how much higher it is. Like, Didn't used to be this, this way. Where, this is where it's supposed to be. The design is still too low. It yeah. looks fine in game. They released the picture of the models in game wearing it, and the in game models look fine. The design is one or two inches higher relative to the in person t-shirt, and the in person t-shirt is different and it's wrong. So you're saying a man designed this t-shirt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And it looks bad on everybody as a result. Uh, yeah, Otherwise, I it looks fine. The design is neat. <laughs> the color is different. I need more purple in my wardrobe. The de it, it needs to be. Yeah. The design needs to be higher. And it is a light. It's like a lavender. It's like a very light purple. It's, I would not, say. it's not. I wouldn't say it's a. Yeah, lavender is maybe it. It's not pastel. No. But it's a lighter purple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I agree with Hannah that the design is, 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 is too low. I will say, Niantic does a lot of things wrong. They barely do anything right. Um, whoever they work with for clothing, that was a right decision. I have, yeah. I have gotten <laughs> multiple shirts mm -hmm. that I've purchased from Niantic and they always just feel better than like shirts from like Pokemon Center or what you get at like Target. I don't like the definitely that. I don't know. I feel like the Pokemon like, Center has good quality T-shirts. Yeah. Oh really? 
Yeah. I, I feel like the Pokemon Center shirts are too boxy. Hmm. Interesting. Like There's they like, are they, well, they're, they're different. more That's fair. They're, Although, they're very they feel like very nineties. I guess I would say that of my Pokemon World's twenty nineteen shirt that is boxier and a sturdier fabric. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is but sturdier the ones, too. The ones that I've gotten from the Pokemon Center are usually closer to what I get from Niantic, which is kind of a really comfortable fabric. Yep. That just kind of you take it out of the packaging and go, oh, this is this feels like a high quality shirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I will say I do have a couple shirts from Pokemon Center that are a little bit boxier and a little yeah. bit uh they fit kind of weird. But I would say Niantic, like to Steve's point, is like the best shirts I've ever worn <laughs> for the way I like to wear my shirts. They fit just right. And then Pokemon Center, I feel like is second to that with their shirts. Like I do really enjoy um the Pokemon Center shirts as well. But yeah, Niantic. I for some reason I didn't buy the 2023 Go Fest shirt last year, but I will say it is still available at least in some sizes. So I was able to pick up one of those today along with the the 2024 shirt. But yeah, Niantic shirts they're doing it right. Maybe they should move to selling more clothes. <laughs> the structure is right. The design is right. There is still is yes, there are definitely still cuz it's yeah, not Niantic without an issue, right? Like you gotta have something. Yeah, I don't know what. Like, sure, it's it's not even like it's G- Gil- Gilladin or Gl- Gladian or whatever that one shirt brand Gladian. is. Gl- Gladion. Uh, it's not like yeah, a I Hanes. was trying to figure out if you were trying to pronounce the Pokemon character. Gildan? No, no, it, what, what's, what's, what's that? Shirt it's company? like Gil- Gildan. Gildan, I think. Gildan. I hate okay. Gildan shirts. Yeah, it, it's they all not, feel it's... boxy to me. The mm-hmm. Gildan shirts always feel boxy to me, and they're not soft at all. Mm-hmm. Also, when it's like, like sandpaper, I, I have made some merch before, and like Gildan, Gildan is like the bottom, like the the cheapest tier you can get when you're making a shirt. So yeah, I guess if you wanted to like maximize your profits, you would you would go Gildan. <laughs> um. Yeah, I I don't I don't know what what brand they use for that. Uh, they Good. also announced this morning was Necrozma is coming to GoFest in Ray. It's on the shirt, so I would hope so. <laughs> it is not the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Necrozma, the Prism Pokemon, will make its worldwide debut in Pokemon Go in raids during GoFest Global. Um, and they also updated the website a little bit. We see that three-star raids will have Espeon wearing a day scarf and Umbreon wearing a night scarf. This is different than the Eevee wearing the sun crown or the moon crown, unless they're not telling us that the crown morphs into a scarf when you evolve it. I don't think that happens. That would be new. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the clothing item <laughs> dramatically changing. But The clothing item evolves. But they have definitely done uh, an Eevee illusion who has... Uh, something that the other ones don't glaceon in the like winter cape mm-hmm. is a good ex- or uh, maybe the only example but yeah so this would be kind of interesting if they ended up like at some point doing each evolution has its own unique i mean it's their way to get people to raid right and, like <laughs> get yeah. make more money on that but it would be kind of interesting for like each evolution to have a unique costume of its own down the line uh so I, I like the i like these ones these scarves on espion and Umbreon. yeah i mean they're very clearly trying to make sure these are raids people want to do in the one star raids in the three star raids in the five star raids we have the shiny jangma oh we have the ev illusions with the new costumes and we have the shiny necrozma so they're trying to make sure people want to do these raids which mm-hmm. is fair Things being locked to raids is is a thing, but I understand why they do it. Money. Yeah. It, yep. it, it works for them. Yep. I mean, yep. to be fair, like, if you were to purchase the raid lover thing, 
uh, which is what, like 18 free passes a day. And you get it for all the days you play. It's a good deal. And even, even me, who has given Niantic way too much money and is always upset about it and is, I would say, I would consider myself a hardcore Pokemon Go player. Um, sometimes you just get distracted with other stuff. Uh, and you you don't raid as, as much as you anticipate. So what I'm saying is like if you purchase the raid lover pass, you need to burn your raids on something. Mm -hmm. So it's nice that you can burn your raids on something that isn't just like Nido Queen or like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like right. Dodri, like something that's like oh why, why is this in raids? I don't need this. It can't even be shiny. Like it's cool that like this is a new Pokemon. It can be shiny. Well, a new costume. It can be shiny. Um, it seems easy enough to do for people that are like I bought the raid lover pass. There's only like me and one other person. We can't do Stockataka, so it's not Stockataka is not even the game. We can't do uh, <laughs> we can't do Tapu Bulu with two people, but we can at least do Espeon wearing a day scarf. So, mm -hmm. like, yes, it is money grabby, but also it is it feels more respectful of people who purchased a raid lover who maybe don't care to do the Alter Beast because they already got them or. Yeah. Uh, they don't have enough people to do them or they like, let's be honest here. Espeon and Umbreon are incredibly popular Pokemon. Right. I'm, I Umbreon actually, is at least. Espeon is less Espeon's so, but popular. still very popular. Not as popular as Umbreon though. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, I will say I'm surprised they haven't leaned into that a little more with the one star. Uh, they One star has always been kind of fine, right? Because they will throw easier Pokemon who are maybe newer shinies, things like that, into a one-star raid. Um, five-star raids have been five-star raids forever. And then three-star raids have always had that weird middle ground where most of the time... They're bad. They aren't worth doing. They are if you are looking for very specific things, but... And for a I, like, while, the thing they did with three-star raids was they put Pokemon in there that were strong against the five-star raids. So right, if you didn't yes. have a Pokemon to battle the five-star raids, you could do a three-star raid and get a Pokemon for the five-star raid from that. That right. was, for That's a long true. time, the gimmick That's with true. that. The problem is that most people don't... A lot of people don't need those Pokemon. <laughs> right, and I think that there is something to putting Pokemon that are popular but also ones that can be shiny because there for a long time they're like you there weren't shiny pokemon in three star raids there would almost never be like a shiny something that could be shiny in a three star raid um but things that allow people to solo raid or just raid with one other person because like you said like sometimes you don't have five or six people to raid with to do the five star raids so they're not you know so maybe you can't get those five star raids but Put something in three star raids that's also popular also fun to want to raid and you can raid with one or two people and it feels like they haven't really done that in the past and then but seeing this like oh that's umbreon with a moon scarf like people love umbreon it can also be shiny it's got a new costume it's in three star raids i don't have friends to raid with but cool i can do this on my own or just grab one other person to to raid with and i'm surprised that they haven't leaned more into that outside of events I, they're they're starting to go that way like the three star raids outside of events do have more like shiny opportunity now now that more shiny pokemon are in the game but um it would be fun to see i don't know maybe like more i i love i love costumed pokemon so if they wanted to like start adding more i know that's a real <laughs> controversial thing because uh -huh. some people hate costume pokemon but I just think it'd be interesting to have them lean into more fun three-star raids for, especially for people who don't have groups of five or six to do those five-star raids. I will say I also prefer it when they also have an opportunity to get those newer Pokemon or more exciting Pokemon in research mm -hmm. as well as in raids, especially research that isn't win five raids. Um, but that's rare. Yeah, that doesn't that's usually happen. That's the worst when uh, when the research is it's like, oh, it's not in raids. It's great. It's going to be in research. Research win three raids. Mm -hmm. That's worse. <laughs> you yep. should have just put it in raids. Yep. Yeah. 
Did they say, I know like if you if you go to the global page and you hit learn more, you can see like everything that's supposed to be spawning, like one star raids is Pikachu, Pikachu, jangma O. Three star raids are the Umbreon, Espeon. Five star raids are Nihiligo, Buzzwall, Feramosa, Zerkatree, Celesteela, Kartana, Guzzlord, and Necrozma. Um, is there not going to be like a day and night theme at this Go Fest like they did for Sinnoh Tour where it was... Um, current time and then like the 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 ultra d- distortion the the space time distortion so they right. did like a mm-hmm. half hour of non space time and then a half hour of space time space so, time anomaly in pokemon go yeah nominally <laughs> not the distortion um there's a reason for that uh-huh. uh, <laughs> so wouldn't like pikachu and the moon crown appear at like the night and then Pikachu with the sun crown during the day, and then I would assume some ultra beast would be at night and some would be during the day. Otherwise, that just seems like it's too random of when ultra beast can come out. Like the maybe the like the most disappointing thing that could happen is like you're playing worldwide in your city, your city only has like two gyms. They did like announce you... they did announce mm-hmm. the four habitats. So I think that's what you're looking for there, the rotating yeah. habitats kind of uh-huh. thing. And so they announced two habitats being kind of daytime habitats and two habitats being nighttime habitats. At least this is on the global news. I'm assuming it's going to be for the in-person ones too, similar to how they've done it in the past. But they yeah. have the dawn meadow habitat, the shining day habitat, the creeping dusk habitat, and the darkest night habitat. These and were am... all generated by AI. Like, give us, give us the most generic. No, I think they're fine. Um, but, but inside, so even even like GoFest L- or Sino Tour LA had habitats, four habitats you could walk to, but inside those, every half hour, it still changed. Yeah. Do you? And so you're think you're wondering, would they do that something like that for? Because you you wouldn't want. I mean, yeah, to your point, there are eight different five star raids that could possibly be occurring. Right, so, right, right. So if there's eight if, and there's four yeah. habitats, it would break in half. Maybe. Yes, maybe. Am I back? <laughs> in- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw like buffering on my on my end. Okay. Nothing stopped over here. I don't oh, know. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was prepared anyways. for it this time, but I guess it didn't crash out. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, no, I could see. I see your point, though. If, you, like you said, if you have a, if you're in a town and there's like a few, just a few gyms, what is to say you don't end up with, you know, three Kartana, right? Like there's there's a big variety of Pokemon, mm-hmm. like that, like of uh, uh, five star raids. So, I know. They typically do, what are they doing now? 30 minute increments for raids. So they, they'll switch them out like every 30 minutes typically for, for raid these day. events. Um, for a raid day, they do kind of reset the raids every 30 minutes at this point. So that if you only have three gyms nearby you and you have three hours to do the raid day, then you have six opportunities to do those raids. Right. I think Sinotor was the, that way too. Like all the raids were resetting like every 30 minutes, 20 or 30 minutes Yeah, as well. But also, Steve, I think you're thinking too much of the in-person events where there's actual physical locations to go to Mm -hmm. with the different habitats based on that. On the global ones with the different habitats, that's usually based on time, at least historically. So it's going to rotate through those over time. And yeah, the raids are probably going to be broken down into a different subset per habitat, Yeah, would be my guess. Because the global Sinotor didn't do... The did they didn't Sinotour do the same thirty minute thing that the in person LA one did where it like it, it was the back half was the back half did was they? time distortions. It was also the same for the global I don't I didn't remember that for the global one, but I remember for the LA one, yeah, like the back half of the hour was distortion, so you were getting the origin form Palkia and Dialga and raids, and the front half was the moder like the regular Dialga and Palkia for the LA Sinotor. No, yeah, they still did the back half because when it when it turned into the space time anomaly, not distortion, uh, that was your only chance of getting the horse forms. Right, but in the global tour, they that was every hour they switched between like 
they switched between the space time, like the Hisui stuff, and then one oh, hour they? was yeah, mm-hmm. in at the global one that was switched per hour, but at the LA one it, it was, was every half every 30 hour. minutes. Yeah, yeah, it was every half hour. Okay. Yeah. that they switched it. Okay, then I am misremembering. Got it. But they could do the same thing with these habitats in the same way. They could hourly when they switch the habitat per hour on the global one. They could switch. Okay, now you're gonna see uh these because there's eight, so they could do these two Pokemon. These two five star raids will happen between you know these hours, and then switch it every every hour so that mm-hmm. it's not just eight random ones every single time yeah i'm just thinking that like that one was four legendary pokemon technically two palkias two dialgas Mm -hmm. and this is eight pokemon yeah a lot it is a lot Mm -hmm. um and they did they say anywhere whether celesteela and cartana would be respective to their regions just shows them both it just shows them in the pool because of if, eight. if if they're not which is fine well not fine it's would be expected um that's like seven pokemon instead of eight and eight fits into four a lot better if they yeah. are saying like yeah. oh nyligo and buzzwall is the first habitat and pheromos and zirkatry is the second one like yeah i could see them having them all and and kind of doing away with the hemisphere thing for for this event just because it's just because it's go fest i could see them yeah i think i mean yeah. like they already milked people at this point <laughs> they already like multiple times three times yeah. <laughs> they've, <laughs> they've yeah. already done the cartana celestila milking face multiple times <laughs> <laughs> at this point although if they do break these different five star raids down into kind of two two pokemon per habitat chunks Necrozma is going to be harder to get. That's true. That's it true. being the new one. Want, well, Maybe. they want people to raid for the new one. That's why they made it shiny. The, yeah, that making it shiny is something is interesting because that kind of shows that they do want people to raid it a bunch versus maybe just doing a one and done kind of thing, which would make more sense if they were just introducing it without the shiny. Well, like, Necrozma is a weird exception because, like, it's not, we cannot spend a half hour on this, but I would, it's not an Ultra Beast. So, it like, it's a weird exception because it's not an Ultra Beast here. It's not an Ultra Beast in general. And so they can milk Necrozma in a different way. They can do Necrozma. They can do Ultra Necrozma. They can do Dawnwing's Necrozma. They can do Duskmane Necrozma. So, mm-hmm. like... This being shiny is like, here's your Necrozma that's going to be the worst out of the other four. Like, th- we have three other Necrozmas that are significantly better than this one. Right. So, like, if they're thinking, how do we get the most money out of our customers? They'll go crazy and spend a bunch of money to try to get the shiny. And then guess what? We got three more Necrozmas in the closet that you're going to do the same thing for. And they're going to be better than this one. Well, we don't know how they're releasing Pokemon that are f- that fuse because, like, we haven't had that yet. I mean, we had well, we d- we did have that. Occurrence. We had that for six had... hours, and then they pulled it from people because they, they accidentally <laughs> they did that. But the way they did that wasn't raids. The way they did that was go battle league. I don't think it was supposed to be there. It, that. But yeah, no, 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 it no, wasn't no. supposed to. Be. Obviously, it wasn't supposed to be obviously, there. they took it away from people. <laughs> but, but, um. Well, that, well, there's only, yeah. like, what, like, three Pokemon in the game that, like, you can change forms. That would be, like, Hoopa, Furfru. And Shaman. Shaman, yeah. And Shaman. And, oh, yeah, so far, yeah. hmm And then they gave up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think for sure they, they just milk the heck out of this. They'd give you Necrozma, and then eventually Solgaleo and Lunala come to raids. Because they're just going to do that again. Because yeah. you can only get one anyways. And that's just easy money for them. And then they're just going to do Dawn Wings Necrozma and Dawn Wings Necrozma. Duskmane and Dawn Wings. Just like when White Kiram and Black Kiram come. Like your current Kiram is useless. There's nothing that's going to like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm still hoping they will do adventure effects on 
some of these Pokemon, though. I want to see more of those. Yes. Totally. Yeah, I don't think Necrozma is good enough for an adventure effect, but I think like a Dustmane or, or a Dawnwings would yeah, be those what they would save it for. Like, yes. I, I guess I'm a little shocked that they're going all in on Ultra Beast plus Necrozma and not so Galio and Lunala are not here. Well, they're not fully going all in because we still don't have Blacevalon or a stock attack. <laughs> yeah, or oh, well, I guess we have Poiple. We have Poiple, but in like Poiple's also not here. <laughs> you yeah. also can't evolve Poiple though, so you yeah. all, we only have Poiple, and that was also uh, a sad release of that Ultra Beast. It was just like here it is, step one of the research. Yep, you get Poiple. You've got it. You're so, good. <laughs> Yeah. We don't I, need well, to worry about it any longer. Well, I guess like Poiple <laughs> makes sense in that because like in Ultra Sun Ultra Moon it was a gift. It's a in gift. Yeah, you're right. The Crown Tundra DLC it was a gift. In yeah. Niantic it was a gift of please play <laughs> our Niantic. game, please play the season, <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I I think that uh, to your point, I think they're going. Yeah, they'll milk Necrozma for years. I'm sure, <laughs> just like they do with everything else, but. Uh, I do think, and again, I think Solgaleo and Lunala will. Nu, Lu, wow, if I can talk. Lunala will also come back in raids when, probably when it can be shiny. Uh, I would imagine, like they'll they'll bring them. That's when you could probably get a shiny one. Will be in raids. Um, but yeah, I they I don't know. They still need to give us a fourth Cosmog <laughs> so I can finish the line <laughs> because. Right now, I don't have Lunala because I don't want to evolve my my Cosmoam until yeah. I have a fourth one. One day. Maybe. Maybe. One day, maybe. I don't think a lot of raids is necessarily bad. I do remember the the one year where they were like, every legendary is coming back to raids, and that was like Gen 1 through 3 or something. That was a GoFest? And... Yeah, that was a GoFest. Yeah, that was, I think it was that... the second global one, the 2021 yes. mm. Go Fest. Okay. And I, think... I just remember that being like a really good raid day. It felt like fresh. Because like if, 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 even if you think about the last one with, with the Sinnoh tour, it was like, do you have Dialga? Do you have Palkia? Do you have mm -hmm. the Dialga that looks like a horse or the Palkia that looks like a horse? All right, you're done. Whereas it was like, the birds, the beasts. I think Mewtwo was there. Lugia, Ho Oh, Groudon, but Kyogre, Latias, Latios. They, had, they made a whole day out of that, didn't they? Like, yeah, they did. In past, they were like, okay, Saturday is this kind of like it's kind of more focused toward story and catching things, and then Sunday is like raid day. Yeah, go, it's yep. like Go Fest mm -hmm. raid day. Yeah, okay, I I do remember that. Yeah, they 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 made like a. An event out of that. I mean, I will say on the um on the uh sorry, the uh website for the Sunday on GoFest, it does also have like like Sunday is a little bit different than Saturday in that Sunday it says there won't be any actual rotating habitat hours. So on Sunday yeah. all the Pokemon will just appear throughout the day. So I, think I that's could a see normal thing too. I could see yeah. them doing Saturday rotating habitats with the raids rotating. And then Sunday, you could have all eight of the five star raids just happening throughout the day as well, which would mm -hmm. kind of get both sides satisfied there, where maybe you'll be able to stack up on the Krozma that day if you want. We don't think like this GoFest isn't going to give us like a, this is going to be our fourth Cosmog. Like, is that. Probably not going mean, to be they, part of the story research that they do. Maybe, but they've been pushing more shadow and everything. So I feel like they're going to focus more that way. And then raids mm -hmm. like ultra beasts and things. Yeah. More like legendary slash ultra beasts for raids versus. Thank you for disclosing that yeah. they're not all I ultra beasts here. <laughs> switched that for you. <laughs> uh, although Necrozma in the video that Niantic posted this morning, Necrozma <laughs> comes out of an ultra wormhole. It so. does. Okay, so so Gal this is the, so Galio and Lunala can open an ultra wormhole too, but they're not ultra beasts. <laughs> true, that's true. That's true. That's true. Uh, yeah, what? Yeah, 
they are they from really ultra space which i understand <laughs> they should do is yeah they should switch it so that we are traveling through ultra space during go fest switch up the whole thing the whole map and have like a half hour at a time we're traveling through ultra space to go get those ultra beasts they've that been would doing be a lot of to... new encounter screens but i don't think they're up for that <laughs> yeah they're... the real test will be to see if they bring beast balls back and to see if they use the beast balls for necrozma this was my biggest because complaint because that would be <laughs> because it wouldn't work we know that the beast yep. ball doesn't work on necrozma <laughs> That's part of the reason why it's not an ultra beast. Here's 30 minutes of me complaining. Number one, Necrozma does not have beast boost. Every single ultra beast has beast boost. Number two, the beast ball does not work on Necrozma. <laughs> Number three, it's this is the thing that Cerebi said for the longest time, that like the code doesn't say that it is. And then in Scarlet and Violet, they did actually code out that all of these Pokemon are Ultra Beasts, but Necrozma, Cosmo, Cosmoam, Solgaleo, Lunala, they are under the Legendary category. They did make a separate category for Ultra Beasts. In the video game, Dulce of the Ultra Recon Squad says Necrozma is like an Ultra Beast. In the anime, they say it's reminiscent of an Ultra Beast, but it's not. It's <laughs> Even if you don't believe the anime or the game for whatever reason... The beast ball doesn't work on it, and it doesn't have beast boost. But um, yes, it is from Ultra Space. That doesn't mean it's an Ultra Beast. Also, we know in the games that Ultra Beasts are very common in their world. That's why when you take the portal to the thing and you get there, there's like a bunch of Zerka trees running around, and it's very cute. There's not that world for Necrozma, Solgaleo, Lunala, because they're not common. They're, they're something special. They're legendary. If anybody wants to go back to any older episode of It's Super Effective and clip out where Steve was ranting about Necrozma not being an Ultra Beast, <laughs> I'm sure there are 15 to 20 episodes where you can find this rant. Uh, I'm sure from at this Steve. point you can probably get a good half an hour. <laughs> so, okay. So, and Niantic, if I'm... Niantic messes this up, I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> the Beast Ball does not work on Necrozma. In order to, to bite on this, um, what is Necrozma, if not an Ultra Beast, then, Steve, as it's floating out there through Ultra Space? It's just a legendary... It, 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 I don't think Necrozma is any different than, like, an Eternatus or, like, a Deoxys. Okay. It's just a legendary that also can travel through... That also travels through Ultra Space, like Sogaleo and Lunala. Yeah, I'm not riding yeah. my. I'm not riding my Kyogre through Ultra Space. I'm not riding my... <laughs> I'm not even riding my Deoxys through Ultra Space. Look, I <laughs> bet you could ride a Rayquaza through Ultra Space or a Deoxys. I'm sure they could. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe even a Star You or a Clefairy. They're from space. <laughs> They're both from space. It says in the Pokedex. I'm not making that up. We need to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> we need a mini or That's what we need. Yes. We All do. right. When we Please. come back, we got some TCG stuff and some anime stuff. Mm -hmm. We will be right back. And we are back from our break. Uh, we have some TCG news, uh, which I lost here. Where did it go? Uh, it's off. <laughs> it's off Pokey Beach. Uh, there's supposed to be a special English Scarlet and Violet 6.5 set to release in August. Um, which is, I wonder if they're trying to line this up with Worlds. But, mm. uh, oh, it's right before Worlds. August 2nd. Mm. Yeah. It will follow Twilight Masquerade, which Bobby was saying, Bobby, correct me if I'm wrong, but this set is coming a little bit quicker than past sets? Twilight Masquerade? Yeah. Yes. Twilight Masquerade comes out May 24th, which is almost exactly two months after Temporal Forces. and. They don't usually, it's usually three months between regular sets and Twilight Masquerade is coming out two months, but you know, it's, it's just two months between these sets. So kind of a quick release, but it, it makes sense if they wanted to push this one out, push this special set out in August, they probably wanted to give a little bit of time between um, Twilight Masquerade and this set. So I guess I understand that, but uh, yeah, there's just, it's. The cards are coming too quick. <laughs> too, too, too many. 
if this set is coming out right before Worlds, does that mean people are going to be able to play these cards in at Worlds? No, that format should be locked by then. Okay. Should it should be is the keyword. Should be. <laughs> it's yeah. also a yeah. special set, uh, which is normally like a lot of reprints with like different art. So they they would be able to play if the card text was like exactly the same, uh, but okay. the art was different. Yeah. Uh, it... It's saying Sorry. there will be an elite trainer box with nine booster packs, promo card, ac accessories, a new illustration rare with four booster packs, three promos, code card, three blister packs, promo card, mini tens with two booster packs. Well, I'm the thing that's interesting to me is this new illustration rare collection box that, that they mentioned, that second one you mentioned, because it's four booster packs, three promo cards, and a code card. I wonder if all three of these promo cards will be illustration rares instead of regular cards. Um, they, this would be the first time them doing an illustration rare collection. So really, really leaning into the illustration rares since those were, I mean, they've done alternate art things and stuff prior to Scarlet Violet, but these illustration rares are new to the Scarlet Violet era. So it'd be kind of cool if there were three illustration rare promos in the, in the box. Just another reason to buy a, a collection box. <laughs> Uh, Poke Beach is also reporting that there's, uh, we know a trademark named Paradise Drag Dragonia in Japan. And since this is the year of the dragon, and since old special sets have been dragon themed, for example, Dragon Vault, Dragon Majesty, that this might be like a dragon themed set. Yeah. And those. So Dragon Vault came out in 2012 and Dragon Majesty came out in 2018 and there would be six years between each. Ah, uh, the patterns. The year of the dragon, right? No, I just mean like, is it six? <laughs> is it six between? It is now. 2018 to 2020. When was the last time yeah, it was year of the dragon? 20. Not six years ago. There are 12, 12 years ago. There are 12, 12 years ago. And it was 12 years ago. Yeah. So halfway through so, so 12 <laughs> the Year years of the Dragon ago, last time dragon, and right? Year of the Dragon the time before that. <laughs> was it uh, Year so it was Year of the Dragon for Dragon Vault, I believe. Dragon Vault. 2012. And not Year of the Dragon for Dragon Majesty in 2018. <laughs> Yep. As I was saying that, I was like, there are so many more than six. <laughs> yeah. Why am I saying six right now? There are absolutely more than six. Yep. <laughs> 12 it sounds is, is the it sounds better but we also don't uh, know how many cards are in this at all no i mean knowing that it's a special set uh, you know it should be should be less than these regular sets although these regular sets are huge to begin with so uh we'll see i mean there are a couple dragon pokemon new dragon pokemon that haven't been in the tcg yet so they could this could be their time to introduce those ones to the TCG as well, which would be cool if they did do kind of a dragon themed set. Um and they have been introducing the newer Pokemon from the DLCs already, so that wouldn't be too surprising. Yeah. And uh there was some talk about um because there's another there looks like there's um another set coming out in Japan in July called Stellar Miracle. Um where they're gonna be introducing um uh, like stellar terra cards and so they were saying they could make this a part of that as well but it kind of seems like it might be more uh dragon related this time around so we'll see what we'll see what comes up as time comes on as time goes on but yeah at this point we just know pretty much the first wave of products coming out um which is not you know, which is typical with like every special set. There's no booster boxes. There's no single sleeved booster packs. Uh, you kind of have to buy a collection set of some kind in order to get packs. Um, if you're buying them, unless you're buying them secondhand, which right? Probably don't do that. It's your best interest to <laughs> to not do that. I have had such a, an itch to play the TCG, but then I think. Oh, TCG Live. <laughs> I was going to say this is the <laughs> same feeling that I've had when I have that same itch. I'm like, yeah, maybe. And then, oh, yeah, TCG Live. We should just, we just need to wait until 
uh, Pocket comes yes. out. Yeah, I think Sometime I think Pocket will scratch that itch. Hopefully, of like shorter, quicker games. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, hopefully, ideal. I don't know what that looks like still, but. And hopefully, it'll still come out this year. Yeah. They, did yeah. they say it was coming out in 2024? They did. When they, they announced did say it, this I forgot. Year. Okay. Again, I, I, I would. If it doesn't come out before Worlds, I would assume, like Masters, they would have like kiosks at Worlds where you could like demo it or try it. Um, when they when they did that at oh gosh, I think that was the DC Worlds, mm -hmm. where you could try out Masters. They gave you like a pin and some other stuff for like waiting in line and, and playing it. Pins, um, all about the pins. <laughs> yeah, the, the that's that Disney thing. <laughs> Just whatever Disney does, let's copy it. Successful. Uh, we also got news this week that uh, Netflix is getting part two of Horizons. Uh, March, April, relatively quickly, less than three months. Uh, part yeah. two is coming to Netflix on May 10th. Lico, Roy, and the Rising Volt Tacklers are setting sail. That's all it really is. That's all it really is. <laughs> is it supposed to be 12 episodes? Oh, sorry. 12 episodes of the first one. They don't actually say how many are on part two. But, um, yeah, quicker, quicker than, than three months, which is, which is good. Yeah. Um, we might actually eventually get close to catching up with the other English episodes in places like the UK. Yeah. <laughs> eventually. <laughs> but they're good. I'm, I'm very excited. I saw the news this morning that that was going to happen way sooner than I expected and made me happy. I did cancel my, anime. I did cancel my Netflix for, <laughs> for April. So you got the month off, but there you go. next I month did. you'll have to get it back yeah. again. Right. I expected to have like two to three months off, <laughs> <laughs> but I guess I'll, I'll guess I'll have to renew. That's like a weird conversation with my tax guy. He's like, Netflix? I was like, I got, I have to subscribe <laughs> to his business. <laughs> Like, I'm not watching it for pleasure, I'll tell you that much. I'm watching it because I need to know what happens so I can talk about it. <laughs> it's good, though. It is good. No, I do. I did like the first 12 episodes of Horizon a lot. Um, did not watch them yet, but uh, as we were saying earlier, um, my kids do like Pokemon, and we've been watching a little bit more of the anime, so I think now is the time to sit them down and Show them Pokemon without Ash. Wait, how 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 old are your kids? Uh, six and four. Yeah, I I don't know kids' age range. <laughs> like, when does a kid stop like watching like Teletubbies or Barney or? My kids never watched Teletubbies or Barney, so I have no idea <laughs> what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> but Bluey is like the Bluey. Big kids your kids show. watch Bluey. My kids right. don't watch Bluey either. Okay. No, they don't you watch mean Bluey. they don't watch Blue? What Paw Patrol? No Paw Patrol either. They um, <laughs> we've been watching Spirit Rangers. Spirit Rangers is great, and they just came out with season three yesterday, uh, and that's great. That's that not like a Spirit a, Rangers podcast, but uh, <laughs> that is, is that a like great a show. cuter version of Power Rangers. It is. <laughs> no, it's um. The characters are Native American, and actually, all of the cast and crew of that show is Native American, and they oh, cool. kind of follow their um, like different things that they do throughout the um, state park that they uh, or the park that not the state park, but the park that they um, run. Basically, it's a great show. It's actually it's great for kids and adults. <laughs> so, Spirit <laughs> Rangers, it's on Netflix. <laughs> Wait, it's wonderful. No, what about Sesame Street? They've watched like a couple episodes of Sesame Street, but they and they read some Sesame Street books. But no, Sesame Street was never a thing. I'm trying to think of the things that my kids, my well, kids don't like... watch. T they didn't watch TV for like my son. He's the older. He's six. He didn't watch TV for like the first two years and maybe two, two and a half years. And then like my daughter a little bit earlier than him, but they didn't watch a lot of TV when they were really, really young. So. I don't know. I feel like Pokemon Horizons is probably especially good for Gen Alpha Gen Alpha kids, just with the way they are doing uh kind of YouTube sort of stuff is built in mm. and apps and devices and school oh, and just yeah. the whole vibes of 
it feels a lot more connected to modern children than Ash just going on adventures around the world ever did. Right, right. I I know that people are always like, Pokemon, why are you playing that kid's game or that, like, but there is, or like kid's show, but there is like Pokemon Kids, which is like for very again, small. I don't, Oh, uh, yeah, probably watch... like, I don't know what the age is. Yes. Like, if you're six years old, what grade are you in? Are you, are you even at school yet? The, my kids don't go to school. Oh, yeah, school. you're homeschooled. <laughs> but they would be, yeah, six years old, you'd typically be about first grade. First um, grade, okay. Yeah, but they do watch Pokemon. So one thing that we do have is YouTube, and we have YouTube Premium. Um, but So we don't have to watch ads. But uh, we have, uh, they do watch like stuff on YouTube. And the Pokemon Kids um, channel on YouTube is wonderful <laughs> as well uh like it's a lot of bunch of songs and they're they're very it's very up to date i mean there are pokemon from paldea and stuff in these videos like they keep them up to date and there's like all kinds of fun stuff that they do on it's like you i think it's pokemon kids tv i think is I yeah think so yeah, yeah. And yeah, I remember so like, discovering that it existed and I was so surprised because yeah, there's so much content. There's there. so much content. There's so many songs. There's so many different videos and it's all, I mean, it's all from the Pokemon company. So it's, you know, it's very um, up to date, which is awesome. Yeah. I guess, I guess like what, what I think is like, when does a child graduate from Pokemon kids into like the Pokemon anime? Cause they're very, they're very different. <laughs> They are, but like my kids watch both Pokemon Kids and the Pokemon anime. So I like at this like they switch back and forth. Like we'll watch some of the um Indigo like we watched some of a bunch of the Indigo League episodes and then they'll just be like, Oh, we wanna watch YouTube, we wanna watch Pokemon like on YouTube and it's typically the Pokemon Kids TV stuff on mm -hmm. there. So they switch back and forth. But um I think I don't know, every parent, I don't want to, I'm not giving parenting advice. That is, we're not turning this into that because that's <laughs> a whole different set of comments I do not want. But uh, for me, kids are, my kids at six and four, like the Pokemon anime has been fine. It's been, okay. it's been good. Uh, so yeah, it wasn't like go. they're, they're, they're too young to like follow or it's too complicated for them to pay attention. Like they, I remember watching the Pokemon anime when I was six. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, that's so Pokemon fun. anime didn't Steve exist I don't when I was six. Yeah. <laughs> Steve and I don't have that same. <laughs> I was at least 10. <laughs> I was exactly I remember... 10 when the Pokemon anime came out, so yeah. I was a uh, perfect age. <laughs> I remember crying when Misty and Brock and Ash went their separate ways. I was very I, young then. I probably also I probably cried, also cried as a 10-year-old. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Brock went their separate ways. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> <laughs> some other pokemon anime news well i guess it's not really anime um but pokemon tv news uh we never talked about this uh but this was back in the end of february more pokemon concierge episodes are coming to netflix which is actually in yeah. retrospect is kind of sur surprising that they didn't mention this on pokemon day <laughs> yeah yeah because it was very popular a lot of people really liked it and the first my time they included. did announce concierge my kids watch that too was it was a pokemon day uh, yeah oh was it last year's pokemon it was last year's yeah. pokemon day huh yeah it was yeah uh more episodes of netflix's adorable animated series pokemon concierge are now in production uh i am letting i am happy to let you know that we are now working on new episodes of pokemon concierge said the director in a statement to variety this is off variety.com life at the pokemon resort will continue please look forward to it uh let's see which pokemon come to visit this time as a guest the four, the first four episodes premiered on Netflix on December twenty eighth. Uh, Fifteen minute episodes introduced Pokemon fans to the Pokemon Resort, um, and they didn't say how many episodes or when the second part was coming. The, the first one was four episodes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Four very short episodes, but that's not too surprising with Playmation. Stuff. Yeah, no, they were they were still they were still very good. Yeah, no, they were fantastic. Mm -hmm. Or they were enjoyable. Yeah, I mean, they weren't Oscar. -winning. You guys over <laughs> They weren't Emmy winning. <laughs> they were enjoyable. TV, they, they, were, were they were solidly were... enjoyable, and I think back on them fondly. Yes, I would recommend them to people who want to have just like you know, uh, four was it an hour? No, it was thirty minutes each, right? No, mm, I think it was only fifteen each. Oh, about you're an right. Hour okay, so if total. you want an hour. 
of enjoyable TV that is just kind of wholesome and enjoyable. Very I chill. Think that would work. Yeah, very chill. Uh, I think that would be a good. They should. Okay, so I was thinking about this the other day because I was I was saying how they should have turned Poke like Poke Pelago into like a mobile game that is like a almost like a uh, farming like a Stardew Valley type like or like a some kind of game like that that's like Pokemon. They could have turned that into a mobile game and made a billion dollars. At least I would have spent money on it. You um, would have. <laughs> you definitely would have. But uh, that like that feeling of like playing the Poke Pelago thing, I feel like pokemon concierge is like that same feeling you're like watching something versus playing but it's kind of it's got that same vibe that same just very like laid back relaxing um kind of way about it so that is that's my recommendation if you're going to want to watch but if you want to watch pokemon concierge i don't think it was worth signing up for netflix <laughs> to watch concierge. well you are gonna have to sign up for netflix for pokemon horizons anyways that's true so that's true. I do have to sign back up. Do you think? Do you think they should have done it as like a YouTube series then instead, like for YouTube? Pokemon Concierge felt more YouTube to me. YouTube, <laughs> not to me, but it, it YouTube. Felt, it felt closer to the TCG. What was it called? Path to the Peak. Oh yeah, Path to the Peak. I like mm -hmm. Path to the Peak more than Concierge, but I think it's because I like used to go to TCG tournaments, so it was like really relatable to me. And I used to trade Pokemon. I've never cards gone on a resort. I've never been to a resort, so just not <laughs> not relatable at all. <laughs> That's fair, but the beginning's really relatable. Everything's going wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, speaking of uh, Poke Pelago uh, and all of that stuff, the the online services for 3DS and Wii U are now shut down. Um, what does that mean for Pokemon games? I will stress this a million times. Pokemon Bank still works. They said it would still work. It will continue to still work. There will be a day where it will no longer work. <laughs> but it it is it is still working now. As long as you have it on your 3DS. As long yeah. as you ask that before it pulled that because the store went down a year ago and now the island services are ceased to exist, but Pokemon.com, support.pokemon.com, support.nintendo.com have clearly outlined that Pokemon Bank was and Transporter are the exception. Can confirm they 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 are still working. Uh, you can still trade Pokemon between X and Y to Auras locally, local trades, local battles, uh, all of that stuff still works if you want to connect with three other people and do the Pokemon Battle Royale and Ultra Sun Ultra Moon. You can do that locally still. The other thing that still works is Friend Safari still works even if you were to add somebody today. So if I was to go up to Hannah and be like, let's exchange 3DS friend codes. One, we can still do that locally. Two, I would still be able to access her Friend Safari because friend safari is generated before you even start your game i think the only thing that happens is instead of three pokemon you only get two pokemon but i actually think you can get around that if you are still local because the third pokemon unlocks when hannah beats the elite four and as long as i do like a trade with her after she's beaten the elite four that should unlock the third pokemon for me but regardless, you could still go to like a PAX or a C2E2 and you could still exchange friend codes locally to get Friend Safari to work in X and Y. Um, it's That still works. Uh, I would assume that the Eon ticket in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire should still work because that's just Street Pass. That's all that is. Um, I have that ticket. Maybe if I go to Worlds or something, I'll bring my 3DS and street past the four people that are desperate for an Eon ticket in that game. <laughs> um so there is like functionality and stuff. I don't I don't think there's like any ribbons in X and Y or Omega Ruby that are tied to participating online. That was only There are not. That was only Diamond and Pearl. That was one. And even there's like a workaround for that where you can just like 
connect fail battle a cpu and eventually get it or something like that there's like a weird workaround where you can still get that ribbon if you really wanted to um last week i was like i i think it was last week or the week before i said oh they'll probably keep pokemon bank up until whatever like i i thought i thought it would stay around longer but i've reassessed this this uh thought now that i've seen <laughs> that pokemon like the website had actually said in the past like while you can still do this, we would recommend you do this at your earliest convenience of yep. transferring your Pokemon through bank to home. So, like you said, like it's still up, it still works, it's fine, but maybe it's not going to be uh, here. We for just don't know. Years to and come, we don't know idea. how much lead time they're going to give us when right. they finally do shut it down. Yeah, I mean, hopefully it's not like a day before or something or you know a couple days before uh, we're shutting in case down in the next three hours uh. <laughs> yeah. Just crash everything when people are all doing it at the same time but uh yeah maybe maybe yeah maybe it's a good recommendation they have too. recommended sooner rather if than later so i think it, it's probably yeah. safer to do it sooner rather than later yeah my assumption is that the thing that would accelerate it to shut down quicker would be security issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to put the time or resources or the manpower into trying to patch the security issue. So they're just like, all right, I guess we're done here. Yeah. So as long as speculation just... and my fingers are crossed, as long as there's no huge security issue that bothers them or Nintendo, it should be fine to continue operating. So so what are your what are your thoughts here on this real real quick? So like for me, I love SOS shiny hunting. And so it's one of the main ways that I shiny hunt. And I haven't I you know, I guess there will be a time if I were, you know, to get everything you can SOS hunt in, you know, Ultras and Ultra Moon. But just knowing that I, you know, at some point, once once bank does shut down, which again, it is not, it can still be used today, uh, but once it does. I don't know that I want to do that because then what am I going to, I'm not going to be able to transfer those Pokemon up. Right. So, so what are your thoughts? Like, are you, do you think you would continue playing uh, the older games and just to play them or knowing no. you're not going to be able to move those Pokemon up or is it just kind of, that's it for older Pokemon games? I think, I think this shocks people and it's, it's kind of like the joke of like me not liking heart gold, soul silver, <laughs> but like, I, I think that the, the the reality behind that like joke or me teasing older games is I don't like to go back to older games, regardless of that's Pokemon or Zelda or like whatever. Right. Like when I was on the Nintendo podcast, I talked about like I had no interest in Final Fantasy seven remake because I already played Final Fantasy seven. I played it a ton as a kid. It was like the one it was like the one game I had and I played it over and over and I, I know what happens in that story with Pokemon. I don't think I would be here on a Pokemon podcast or care about Pokemon. Like I would still like Pokemon. Obviously, I would still care about Pokemon. But the only reason I go back to old games or want to buy old games or like have 3ds's and ds's and link cables and all that stuff is because it is the one video game series that you can continue transferring things forward mm -hmm. and so like i'm playing let's go pikachu let's go eevee right now which isn't even that old of a game and i'm loving it but also i know at the end of that journey the like eight pokemon or whatever that i end up getting i can move them forward like i caught a shiny primeape in that game Mankey evolved this primate and all i think is when i when i caught that when i was shiny hunting it was like this is going to be super cool this is going to be an annihilate of one day mm -hmm. and it's going to be an annihilate that came from let's go pikachu let's go eevee i think that's so interesting and cool i, I just like like hannah's blaziken mm -hmm. please Which talk about it in home she is, is safely so in home at this point so cool <laughs> yeah for sure yeah, that's I've mentioned her a couple of times. I've had that Blaziken since I was like seven years old, since Pokemon Ruby came out. She was my first starter in Pokemon Ruby. And as the newer games came out since then, I have moved her up through all of the DS games, through all of the 3DS games. 
somewhere around X and Y and ORAS, I decided to start getting as many ribbons as I could on her. And so she kind of got stuck in the 3DS for a while. But over the last few work weeks, I've worked really hard to get those last 3DS ribbons on her. And now she is finally in bank. And I'm, I'm, I'm checking bank every day just to say hi to her because I can actually see Blaziken on my phone now. Um, oh, but yeah, that's cool. I've had that Pokemon for more than 21 years. And the fact that that is possible <laughs> is amazing. No, yeah, I think that's so incredibly cool. And like I know I know for sure we're in the minority of players of like there are, I know plenty of people who have never transferred a Pokemon forward. And that's fine and acceptable. I know people who shiny hunt in Pokemon Crystal and they have no that those shinies will live in Crystal forever and they're totally content with that. Also cool. But a huge draw to the series and why like I've been doing a Pokemon podcast for almost 14 years is there's like a reason to like actually go back and play older games because you can move those forward. Like I still, I haven't had time to do it. I still want to, I have a copy of battle revolution. I think I have a Wii somewhere. Um, I want to go into <laughs> battle revolution. You can actually get a Magmar and an Electabuzz from battle revolution as gift Pokemon, and you can move them out into the main series games. And that's like, it's just a, like, I have so many Magmars, Electabuzzes, Shiny Magmars, Shiny Electabuzzes. Like, I have so many, but I don't have some from Battle Revolution, and I want that. Mm. <laughs> like, and that's that's why I would, if I didn't have a copy of Battle Revolution, I would go out and get a copy of Battle Revolution to be like, I want those two specific Pokemon. I think that's so cool. I think that's so interesting. The second that's all disconnected, whenever that day comes of Diamond and Pearl, X and Y, black and white, they cannot move into Sword and Shield. Like that connection is broken. I I don't care about those games anymore. They're mm -hmm. just like sh sh my memories won't be gone, right? Like I still will be think very fondly of my Who time knows? in Alola, <laughs> but yeah. Like I have no reason to own a copy of Pokémon Crystal or Pokémon Yellow. Because the compatibility is not there yet. There was no compatibility between... Like, I don't think it's talked about enough of, like, a lot of people my age fell off on Gen 3. And you could say... I, I think an easy reason is, like, Pokemon came out when I was 10. So, you know, still in elementary school, early middle school. You're getting, like, closer to the end of middle school and then high school. And, like, that stopped being cool when Gen 3 came out. But a big part of that was compatibility. Like, knowing that there were two new Pokemon games coming, and the Pokemon you moved from Pokemon Red into Pokemon Yellow into Pokemon Silver into Pokemon Crystal, all of a sudden cannot move? Like, that was mm. such a turnoff. And there was no Twitter back then. There was no Reddit back then. There was no Facebook back then to, like, go on to complain about. But that was a huge thing mm. of, like... Oh, maybe I'm getting too old for Pokemon. Oh, and I can't even move my Pokemon over. Like, ugh, I, I'm done with this series. Like, was, I'm, I'm moving on. It was big enough that they even came out and said after that happened, like, were they didn't they? I don't know if they went as far as to apologize, but they definitely were like, we're not doing that again. <laughs> like, <laughs> they <whoops>. did. They, <laughs> yeah. they did say that when they announced, like, when Fire was Leaf. that? Was that I like mean, Fire virtual Leaf. console games or Fire something? Red Leaf Green. I think didn't they say that when they announced? Because they were like, "Well, here's here's Gen One again, and sorry, but we're not mm -hmm. gonna make it so you can't bring those Pokemon up here again." I yeah, think it was right around that time, possibly. Yeah, and I think they've I done mean, a good know, job for. They know that our yeah. Pokemon are sentimental. Mm -hmm. They I, know that people care about the Pokemon that they have shared travels and years and adventures and achievements yeah. with. I think maybe they didn't realize how much that would be true. I mean, there were, I, this was years ago, right? So there were whatever reasons that they had for the not being able to bring things forward or just the way that they decided to do things. But I think once they got the, the feedback of what happened, the, the feedback that they could from what happened, I think they were like, oh, like people really care about the, these characters. They want to take them with them 
all the way up, you know? So, uh, they, and they've done, like you said, they've done a great job of it since then, you know, they, uh, as it's of not now, the you can still bring things process, up from, but you can do it, through, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it takes right. a little effort. Yeah. 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 It's not, not super easy, but like, more I than don't, I don't any other fault game. them for eventually closing this connection. Um, yeah. Cause like if you, if you, if you have a, how old is your Blaziken, Hannah? <laughs> Since Pokemon Ruby came out, probably since the day those games released. If you have a Blaziken that old and you haven't moved it by now to a a, a current game, like it's it's not like I was trying to I'm get s- ribbons on sure, her. Sure, sure. But what I'm saying much. is they they have given us <laughs> ten time. plus years, right? Yeah. They've given you a long time to move it forward. Yeah. It's it's not like a you know like a Niantic thing where it's like you got one week to buy this ticket. If you don't buy this ticket, go- you'll never see this Pokemon again. Good luck. Yeah. Right? They yeah. they I'm just, they're just given they've given a lot, and I can't think of another series that has had so much backwards compatibility. Like there are people that have been playing World of Warcraft for like a decade and stuff there have been people playing final fantasy 14 like there is there are still people that play final fantasy 11 right mm-hmm. and that game hasn't been updated for years but there it, it, there's nothing like pokemon where it's like i have a 20 year old pokemon that i've moved through 16 different games i've moved mm-hmm. it to x i've moved it to y i've moved it to omega <laughs> i've moved it to ultra sun regular sun ultra moon regular moon there's just nothing like that and I think that's why I go back to older Pokemon games, whereas I wouldn't go back to older games in general, like Link's Awakening, one of my favorite games. They came out with a remake. Did I buy it? No, because as a kid, it was like one of my two games for like four years. I had Link's Awakening and I had Kirby. And so I played a lot <laughs> of Link's Awakening. I like it a lot. I have fond memories of it. It was really great. I beat that game a million times. Did I buy the one on Switch? No, I, I've been there, done that. Super Mario yeah. RPG, they came out with a new one. Did I buy it? No, because, again, another game I played a million times. I would rather play new games. Um, but with Pokemon, it's like, if I play this old game, I can bring this into a new game. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, I'm I'm super excited to get my Let's Go Pikachu Annihilate in, in a couple weeks when I move him over. <laughs> <laughs> I do think that it's important for games to continue to be available for people who haven't played them before though. And that's a slightly different conversation Mm -hmm. going back to a game you have already played before and revisiting a remake of a game you've played before is a completely different experience from revisiting an old game you haven't played before. Like I, in my process of bringing Blaziken up, uh, realized I never actually finished, uh, the, the ultra sun ultra moon games somehow um (laughs) i had forgotten that and i need to replay those and that's i think still going to be a good experience even though that's playing a game from a while ago at this point Mm -hmm. yeah i mean there's the 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 easy solution of like put red and blue on the virtual console that like well first off they haven't used the word virtual console in like eight years (laughs) (laughs) but like put like red and blue on the switch so we can play it and go back to it i'm for that like i'm definitely not against that Mm -hmm. but if if they were like we're putting red and blue on to the switch but it won't work with pokemon home i wouldn't get it i would be i'm not interested like i first off those games are kind of dog water at this point but it's like (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but like if i can't go through and be like i'm gonna move this mewtwo from red and blue into scarlet and violet like i'm not interested i i i want that i, I again i know that's not for everyone somebody just wants their nostalgia they just want to go through it because their childhood mm-hmm. but like if i'm going back to an old game like an old pokemon game i want to be able to take what i do in that game and move it forward well yeah and I that's think... a very pokemon specific thing yeah oh, that's that's the thing that i was gonna say is that these games give people options right so if you want to go back and play an older game so you can take a pokemon all the way through you can do that if you want to just go back and play an older game to just play the older game you can also do that the thing for me is knowing that you can bring pokemon up now but then when that's not available anymore it's like 
do I want to like, I don't mind playing older games when I know like that's the way the game is and you play the older game and it's done and it's over and that's the end and that's fine. But in this case, it's like, well, right now I can play the older game and bring the Pokemon up. And then like, let's say in six months, I play the older game and I can't bring the Pokemon up. Knowing that I could at one point and now I can't, is there something different there to me? Like it's going to make me feel a way about it where I won't, I probably won't want to go back and play the game. And I don't know if that has to do with the way Pokemon games with a story for Pokemon games or something where it's not, maybe that's not the biggest thing for me and for a lot of people probably with Pokemon games. Uh, so it, I don't need to go and play that older game to experience that in the same way. Uh, but there's something about it. There's something about knowing that now I can move the Pokemon up. But if I play that game in maybe six months or a year from now, it's going to be a different experience. You're going to lose a part of what part of what makes the Pokemon game, the Pokemon series, the Pokemon series in a way, not to say that you're not to say that your experience is going to be worse or that you, you may love those older games where that you can't even move things up. And that's totally fine. But part of the Pokemon series has been being able to move things up and it's losing that on the older games. And so it feels like it's losing a part of what makes the Pokemon series, the Pokemon series. And to your point, like they eventually have to, cut it somewhere because there's going to be like you said security things that they don't want to have to go and patch old stuff especially when Nintendo's not even supporting the online system and things like that but i don't know like it just feels like it's losing something it's it's losing part of its the essence of it being a Pokemon series game by not being able to move things up it doesn't feel like also if you're if you're watching on YouTube feel free to comment like subscribe let me know in the comments if you would play an older pokemon game if it didn't have the ability to move a pokemon up like how important is that to you i would like to read those comments it does seem like now with the switch stuff because pokemon home is a mobile app that there is like some level of security going forward there Mm -hmm. whereas like pokemon bank was this 3ds only app and we all knew even while playing the 3ds that this is not going to last forever even though they introduced it by saying like two generations down the line you would be able to share pokemon yeah that you caught then and there right but it's like but yeah. the 3DS no. is not game freaks product or like the pokemon company's product right they they are they're constrained by the hardware limitations of that device whereas pokemon home can work on the switch it can work on an android phone it can work on a apple phone like that app is theirs and they just need to place that app somewhere they never placed pokemon bank anywhere but the 3ds right. where at least with this one it's on three different platforms android yeah, there's iOS, more variety and- they yeah. could make Apple and Google really mad and get kicked out of the app store. But <laughs> they, they could... <laughs> somehow <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna contest like Epic and just get banned. <laughs> yeah, uh, but there is Perfect. more variety now. That is true. It's in multiple places, so there's more security just in that 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 they have more platforms that they're on. So that is good. But still, I uh, to your point, like I still think it would have been great if they introduced these older games if for nothing else just introduce them onto the switch in some way like in some kind of capacity yeah maybe maybe uh future (laughs) well no (laughs) onto a modern day system so that like because people uh, we'll we'll see what the comments say but people still love the older games Mm -hmm. people do love playing the older games and why wouldn't Nintendo and the Pokemon company want, especially Nintendo, want to be like, well, all these games are here on the Switch. Like, come buy a Switch. You have the 3DS. You're playing these older games here. Come buy a Switch. You can play the older games on the Switch as well. Because those mean, games are Mario Kart. discussed it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> those yeah. games are not Mario Kart 8. The only <laughs> game Nintendo cares about. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the revisits of older games like that 
ports of older games like that don't make nearly as much money as new games. Not to mention the way that the Switch has handled ports of old games means that the money probably wouldn't be going to the Pokemon company as much anyways. So there's yeah. there's a lot of reasons in the systems we have right now that I think are why we are not getting those ports anymore. Right. Yeah. And I guess it is a different experience when you're playing those games on the systems that they were originally made for, right? Like there is definitely a difference in like I I take enjoyment in playing a po- older Pokemon game on the 3DS or in my case now the 2DS XL. But on that like system versus going to the Switch where it's got the OLED screen and everything and you're playing. There's there's differences, right? There there is a a charm and something to playing it on that older system the way that it was played to some extent versus playing it on the brand new system and having it, you know, but I just, I just want them there. I, what I really want. Okay. This is, this is what it comes down to is I just want a Lola on the switch. However, they need to do that. They make a Pokemon stars. They just put it on as a virtual thing. Some way for me to visit a Lola on a switch. Then I will just, I don't care after that. That's just, that's all I want. I think the only thing they could have done better or planned out, because like, if anyone knew what was going to happen, like, I think Game Freak slash any developer knew that Nintendo on the 3DS was, Nintendo Online on the 3DS was not going to last forever. Like, we're just Mm -hmm. not going to support these servers. We're not going to keep up security. We're not going to keep patching loopholes or whatever. Like everyone, every developer knew that this was going to happen. It just, there is a little like, why didn't they build a different app or update Pokemon Bank for better security slash future proofing that when the servers go down? Because again, they did say this isn't going to last forever. Like it will last after Pokemon, after Nintendo's server shut down, it will still work, but maybe you should transfer your Pokemon sooner rather than later Mm -hmm. so it was a bummer to see there was no like final update to pokemon bank to be like we here is the here's the solution going forward and i don't know what that would be right like in my head it would be like we're gonna generate you a one-time qr code you're gonna scan it that's gonna move the pokemon over you don't need any online it will delete the pokemon like Probably, cable, probably not a great way to do that. Like, there's that's probably not security how Pokemon hold. banks to begin. That that's not how Pokemon Bank works to begin with, because your Pokemon aren't stored on your 3DS. Your Pokemon are stored in the servers right. that they're going to have to shut down eventually. Right, right. So yeah. it's like I don't, I don't know what True. that solution would have been. Besides, like we built this thing ten years ago, and we can't make it any better. And now Pokemon Home exists, and that's better and more future proof, but. This was the best we could do. Yeah. And I think there there are fans that are jaded or upset that like they missed that opportunity to even download Pokemon Bank and Pokemon Transporter. And there's no way to get that. Well, there's no can, correct way to get that. There's no ethical way. I don't know how to word you that. Could, you, okay, could still, sure. you could still buy. Yeah. You could still secondhand buy a system with it on it. That's that true. was legitimately downloaded on it, and you <laughs> yes, can but there are, there beware are 3DSs they are selling with Pokemon Bank sell, yeah. so being sold on eBay. They are selling for more <laughs> than just your typical 3DS because of the fact that they have Pokemon Bank and Pokemon Transporter and stuff on them. So I bought a Wii with my Pokemon Ranch on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I've never plugged that Wii in. I have no clue if it's actually, if it actually on there. Has. Oh, no. I bought it like a couple months before I moved to Minneapolis. And so like it arrived. I was like, yeah, it looks like everything is here. And then I immediately put it back in the box and then it got packed and it's, it's somewhere in my house. I can't believe you didn't. You bought a console and didn't like turn it on. Like that's just to see that the console powers. I I don't know. I I tr- I trusted the source I bought it from. I I that's like fine. that that wasn't that's the fine. worry. The I, I didn't was I wasn't worried I was gonna get like scammed. If anything, I worry that like just the hardware failed. Hey, I that's not even like I bought a 
the first 3DS that I bought, I actually bought from a friend. It made it for this made for a real awkward situation. So I bought the 3DS from a friend. I and uh, they also gave me Pokemon X or something just to just to play. Like it, they let me borrow it because I didn't have any games yet. But I was I bought the 3DS from them. And I go home and I power on the 3DS and it powers on. And then maybe like 15 minutes into playing it, it starts acting all weird. And so I turned it off and like I turned it, it wouldn't turn back on. And and then I like, you know, I read up online at the time because I was like, what's going on? And then there was that whole like issue with the 3DS having that wire that goes between the screens that would get like oh, stuff would yeah. happen with it and it would mess. It oh, would... I know. I remember. I forgot about, about that. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That, that issue. Right. So obviously I trusted my friend. Like it was my friend. It wasn't like some random person. And I could go to the person and I did go to the person and was like, you it's broken. Like I took it home for one day and it's not working now, but like, I promise I didn't do anything to it. I just turned it on to play the game and it, it was a whole awkward situation. I mean, we're still friends and everything, but it was like an awkward situation. But like, I also, I also trusted that source, but like <laughs> these things happen with these systems, especially, well, especially with so that you're So, so people are like, why did you buy a Wii U with my Pokemon ranch? Same thing that happened, right? Like the Wii U stuff shut down. Mm -hmm. There was no way to get my Pokemon ranch. My Pokemon ranch, like Pokemon battle revolution has a couple exclusive Pokemon. <laughs> One of those is a Mew. Mm -hmm. Now I have like 40 Mews. I have, I have the Mew from, from Toys R Us. I got the Mew from Heart Gold, Soul Silver. Maybe that was the Toys R Us one. I got the Muse from Pokeball Plus. I got the Mew from the Scarlet and Violet. Like I got a lot of Mews. I don't have a Mew with the OT of Haley. Yes. Because that is the that is the camp <laughs> owner of my Pokemon Ranch, the ranch mm -hmm. owner. And I believe to get the Mew, you have to move in a thousand Pokemon into the ranch. And then she's like, Good job. And then she's like, here's a Mew. I think I did that. Uh so uh if they want me to get that Mew, once they announce that it's shutting down in a month, I got, I've really got to move. <laughs> you should turn that Wii U on before they yeah. announce that they're shutting should, it down. I bank. should start that journey to get Haley's Mew. Yeah. I, should, I think there's a couple other Pokemon you get on the way. I think there's like I a, see a new, I see a new Twitch series starting for you of <laughs> getting the Pokemon Ranch Mew. <laughs> I would say you, my Pokemon Ranch is enjoyable, but it's not engaging mm. in the same way <laughs> mm. yeah it is a uh i really pre, liked it but pre it's pokemon very chill. bank but <laughs> you can like see pokemon moving around which is like fun mm -hmm. yeah. all right well that's our episode for you guys uh uh like i said if, if there's any news that came out after we recorded this we recorded this early because i will be in florida and um then uh i'll be back and we'll stream and hang out on twitch and there should be some youtube videos going up and there should be obviously another podcast um but if i saw you in orlando cool if i didn't sorry sorry you missed me uh but we'll be back next week <laughs> this has been another episode uh oh thank you thank you bobby thank you hannah <laughs> this has been another episode of the pokemon podcast and we are super effective super keeping a very close eye on if they bring the beast ball back in pokemon go when necrozma's in the game just just watching out for that they're gonna just mess to make it up. steve mad just to make <laughs> steve mad they're gonna mess it up <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.